Greetings, greetings, peace and blessings. We are the Mohammeds, the residential tourists, 85 to Africa, and we are living in the after. And so we're on, embarking on a particular journey. Not really me, really more like her. Fat boy, <laughs> him too. So, you know, this is the land of a thousand hills. So you really don't need to join a gym. I want to join a gym. <laughs> All you gotta do <laughs> is walk. <laughs> you walk, you'll get some exercise for sure, and you'll lose whatever you're trying to lose or tone whatever you're trying to tone for sure. I almost died the other day trying to walk these hills. I ain't ready. <laughs> so a lot of you have sent me messages. We, we read all of our comments. So a lot of you have sent us messages, posted on the comments, asking about what I've done personally to drop so much weight. And the answer is I didn't do. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Just live in Rhonda. Just live in Rhonda. <laughs> Um, I've had blood work done. I've had scans, x-rays. No one, I've, I've taken um, tests to see if I had any parasites. So far, nothing has come up abnormal outside of the thrombosis that I told you guys about before. Um, but I've had that for years, so that's definitely not why. Uh, so what I want to do is only thing we could think of is that, you know, we dance a lot at that Ikawa Cafe. <laughs> um, walk. We walk a lot, I think. Um, but not the, hills. not the hills. So today, I or this week, as I had some bone issues, I had said mentally, once I could feel no pain in my body, I want to do this intentionally. I want to lose 40 more pounds. Um, so far in the last 10, uh, how long we've been here, 14 months, I've lost 65 pounds and I don't know what I did, but, um, oh, you like that? I mean, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's an achievement. I thought you liked me fluffy. Listen, I'll take you anywhere I can get you. <laughs> <laughs> so, <Don't> um, <laughs> We uh, also have our our um, yardsman help, not help, he did it. He planted a garden with some of the seeds we had sent in. I'm gonna show you our garden. So we are um, striving to eat healthier. We don't necessarily have a food shortage here in Africa, like they want you to believe, um, but some foods have, prices have gone up. And because we- yeah, prices have gone up. <laughs> prices gone up. And because we still eat a lot of the foods that we grew up with, like um, more than they do, they they stick really to their staples, and we still like our staples: our broccoli, our cabbage, um, our romaine cabbage. lettuce. Let me, I gotta do a whole a whole Ugh. thing on cabbage <laughs> in Rhonda. Yeah, the he's addicted their to their cabbage. The <laughs> I kind of feel offended by it, like. Listen, I can have it. It don't have no every, vinegar in it. It don't nothing, have no smoked turkey, nothing, no nothing. Nothing. And he just, <laughs> I want your cabbage. And I'm like, I'll get it. Okay. I'm telling you, I've had it mo more than one way. He would eat it every day. And everybody would be like, no. <laughs> and she said, what do you want to cook? He like, we, we got cabbage. Get the cabbage out. It's crazy. <laughs> so we waiting for the cabbage to grow and our broccoli has sprouted. But no, it hasn't sprouted. It's just the the. The leaves have grown, but we're still waiting for the fruit to come into labor. But let's show you the garden real quick. So here is, this is our broccoli. If anyone in these farmers out here can help us to understand what happens after this part. <laughs> um, because I haven't seen any broccoli florets yet. Nope, and this is new for Rhonda. They're not really a broccoli. It's not one of their staples. It might be too cold here, I don't know. So we don't know what to do. I can Google it, yes, I know, but somebody else can help us. And we had, this was all filled with romaine. Of course we ate it all, so we gotta wait for the next turnover. And some peppers. This had nice, big, beautiful cucumbers. We're in our dry season. So it's starting to kill some of our produce. I guess I should have canned some. 
Wow. Bub, look how big this radish is. The radishes are monster. <laughs> Fat boy. You see that? He is completely overgrown. And these radishes, yeah, let me see. Let's it up. we also have beets. So, yeah. so you look at look at that radish, right? Now, I, I've honestly, I can't say that I've even seen you know <laughs> any radishes uh, pulled directly up from the ground in the states, but I've never seen on my plate a radish, you know, <laughs> no more, no bigger than the size of a quarter. And this, there is no GMO here. There is no, you know, uh, artificial, you know chemicals or anything like that and this is coming directly from my home my god so definitely so yeah i've taken this to ikawa and um, i'll take this one there as well and let them put them on our salads they're beautiful i like them for oh he brought the tomatoes over look at them okay she, she gets oh i'm sorry i got it <laughs> the tomatoes are sprouting the tomatoes at ikawa is growing i pick at least six a week but here we have a whole lot of tomatoes uh, that we planted. Let me put you right here. That we planted. It has ants in it in our bike. So, yeah, our tomatoes are growing. Um, these are going to be, so they don't have jalapenos. It's not, um, it's not, see those tomatoes over there? Oh. And they're cherry tomatoes. That's not native to Rhonda. So we're gonna have cherry tomatoes. Wait, Ooh. I ain't stepping on nothing. <laughs> Why are the tomatoes or peppers? Oh, those are peppers. Peppers, yeah. Those are peppers. Those are tomatoes. But um, we got jalapenos growing, which isn't native to here. We have cherry tomatoes growing. Anything you put in the ground in Africa or the ground here in Rwanda is going to grow, except for those that have to be in direct sunlight all the time. Like strawberries, they don't grow good here because they're not getting no sun. Um, oh, but our carrots, show them the baby carrots. Let me pull up one. It's still small. These are taking a while to grow. I'm assuming it's the lack of direct sunlight. These have been in there two about two weeks as I mean two months as well. They're not growing bigger than this, so it has to be the sunlight. I'm in Africa, but we don't get sun, like beaming sun, like you would think in Rwanda, because we're in the mountains. We don't get that kind of sun. So some things I'm not going to get. I understand that, but what we cherish that we keep using is the peppermint. Peppermint tea, peppermint grows like weed, I guess. So we had just one little bit of peppermint. We used up, I'm showing the peppermint. We had um, made peppermint tea for like, I don't know, we're addicted to it, like two weeks. All of this was empty. And then they grew back small. Look how big they are now. We got a full supply again. And all of that is peppermint. And because of, now this is something else we didn't realize. Me and my husband talk about it a lot. Oh man, I wish I could show him a turnip. But we don't have squirrels here uh, in Rhonda. Or, yeah, they don't have squirrels here. So I don't have little teeth marks in our food because of how they build their houses inside of like compounds. We don't have bunnies. We don't have all those things that used to grow at home and I would come and see little teeth marks in my strawberries and the leaves <coughs> ate up. We don't have that problem here because they can't get in or, or they just don't have, I don't know if they don't have the animals, but there's no bunnies in here. There's no squirrels or anything like that. So everything can grow and it's growing very good, very well actually. How big that turnip is. All right, so I'm getting ready to show you this hill one of and this is not even the biggest of hills it still it just takes the life out of me anyway <laughs> i'm going to show you it and uh we're going to walk it briefly so.
For me, I'm gonna take it slow. I haven't done any exercise outside of dancing every 10 minutes. Um, but I still get winded. Look at that. And uh, yeah, now we're gonna show you. We're gonna walk by. We're gonna show you some. Lady. Let's go. <laughs> we're gonna show you how we're put to shame because I don't know if you can see this <laughs> sister here. She got a big old bucket, right? Of cement on her head in the middle of the hill. And the dude's and, uh, on her head, not his. That's crazy. <laughs> so, I don't know which direction they're going. If they, oh, she, yeah, they're going up the hill. Okay, he got one too. So, this mm -mm -mm. is, who, who's doing that? And she ain't even straining. <laughs> she ain't even like. <sighs> so, <laughs> that's, that's what they do here in Rhonda. They do what they have to and what they, and, and what they must do. And, uh, this is one of those uh, amazing, remarkable things, man, that you that you see. She's she got a stride as she got a little swiftness. She on the flat ground. I'm down here dragging. All right. Down here, like. Like, don't put the camera on me, please. This is not a pretty moment. <laughs> you got to see it from the beginning. <laughs> all the way through. Look, y'all running. <laughs> so this is what I like to see. This has nothing to do with nothing, but the children walk by here to go to school right up the street. So this actually is not chalk. It's actually uh, rocks, you can see them, that they've utilized. But it's kind of nostalgic. You know how we, in the States, we'll go to the five and below <laughs> Walmart or wherever, get some colored chalk and let the children go to work. And uh, let me get out the street, car coming. Yeah. So I don't know what this is, <laughs> but every morning you hear the pitter patter of the feet of children and all their joy and glory going to school. You could even hear their school lessons, you know, from the house. <laughs> Come on, Mrs. Muhammad. <laughs> Diaphragm, diaphragm. Right. She's beautiful, right? Look how beautiful. The sun says agrees with her beautiful uh. shea butter skin. <laughs> I'm gonna kick this fast this uh, bucket off her head. No, you better not do you know, such like a thing. So look, I mean it just keeps going up. You get a little, you get a reprieve on a flat level. Keep it going up. And then it's a whole nother level up, up, up there. And they just do it with grace and ease. It's a beautiful view. Can't think when I'm tired, I'm like, uh. All right, so this, this is what we have for, for today. Um, uh, battery is dying. <laughs> so it's a little small video. We wanted to just kind of bring you into our world. Uh, and, you know, sometimes these things are epiphanies. You know, it's like, hey, you know what? Let's just do yeah. a fitness whatever. Just a little yeah. well, well, well. Wellness. Wellness check. People are asking, what are you guys doing? How are you? I want to do a live. I want to talk about some strong issues. He's telling me no. no, no, no. Um, but I, I do. I, I want to do a live. I want to talk to y'all about <laughs> the real Rhonda. What, what we've been experiencing. I mean, everything's real. Every yeah, well, you know, when you first <laughs> move to a new place. Say no studio. Mm, everything not Paramount is, Pictures. No, no, no. But when you first move to a new place, like a new country, even a new town. Honeymoon. Like, you're in that beautiful honeymoon time period. Now stuff just got real. 
Well, you know, we're going through some real stuff. True, but because you know, we, our experience is, the, the, our, the perspective is a little different from the average because we're business owners. Business. We're business owners, so we have to, you know, interact in a way that is not uh, where most people don't have to. So we have to deal with uh, the culture on different levels. You know, you know the, the business culture within the culture, if that makes any sense. So with our staff, how they operate and in, in are accustomed to doing business, working, employer, employee re working relationships, how different those things are, customer relations or consumer relations, how that is compared to what we're accustomed to, you know, so we get a different, uh, it's a different dynamic. And of course you're dealing with the everyday average individuals. Uh, so, so we were driving y'all, we didn't do a video on that. We were I gotta, driving. We got it. We have to I'm, <laughs> listen, but the driving made him mean. Listen, we had, I thought, how long we had the car for a month. Geez. He was mean that whole month. <laughs> the whole month he was mean. Listen, like, <laughs> The driver makes you so upset. I'm a I'm a I'm a practical guy. I'm a practical common sense fella. I don't, I'm not really that intelligent, but I have a I have a lot of wit and common sense. <laughs> and and you know when things are impractical and don't make sense, it just frustrates me. And you know being a passenger, seeing and witnessing and experiencing the roads in the vehicle, that's one thing, and that's. That's something in and of itself. But when you're on the, and you behind the wheel, and you're the driver, whoo, that's a whole nother level. So we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna bring you in on, on that. We'll you share that with you. So I'm, I'm gonna, cause we're gonna get the car back next week. I'm gonna record them. <laughs> don't tell you the don't whole judge time. me. Don't judge it's me. Me and him, we're just like fighting the cars. And, 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 and what the hell? That don't make sense. Pulling up, I'm just like yelling out. It's crazy. <laughs> but but no, I'm gonna save it. We'll, we'll save the meat of everything uh, 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 when, when we when we bring you in on that experience there. But for now, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna forego. We are, okay, so this is the next hill, but she wants to walk it. So <laughs> we're gonna walk this next hill, and then uh, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. All right, so we're hitting this this final hill, which is only the second one. We're not going to overdo it, but you can see some of the beautiful views <clears throat> here. Uh, beautiful houses, you see. <clears throat> and Mrs. Muhammad is doing her thing. She's pushing along. She's pushing along. So we nearly reached the top of it. You can see some of the houses there. And then more of the view. And this view is incredible. In the day and the night. As you can see, there's open plots of land. <clears throat> so, yeah, definitely selling land <laughs> for you to build your house on. Had a reasonable reasonable rate <clears throat> so made it up <laughs> she wanted to record <laughs> she's rocky rockia <laughs> she's made the hill all right you at least breathe heavy, like it sounds like it was rough for you. She <laughs> so want me to pant and breathe, almost just breathe and a little bit. Over. Well, breathe. <laughs> well, there you have it, folks. She made it up the hill. She's my inspiration. <laughs> she toughed it out. <laughs> so this is the beginning of. Uh, a fitness journey and um, we'll bring you on and on uh, our continued efforts walking you know some other things as well
So we are 85 to Africa, living in the Africa. If you're the Muhammad, the visibility tourist, please, please like, share, and subscribe. And subscribe. All right, we'll continue to pray for you. Please keep us in your prayers and uplifted and good positive thoughts and good energy. And we'll see you on the next time. God willing.